We brought in teasing humor into the interaction when you first started talking to her. That interaction was fun for her, right? You brought that in, and let's say that only made a 30% difference. Well, now you've got a 26%. You're not even going to notice it, are you? And let's say that you, uh, when you're texting the girl, the first text you send is something playful and humorous, so that there's, there's incentive for her to want to see you again, right? I don't remember him that well, but he's kind of fun in the text, so I'll go out with him. Try going on a date. All right. 30% increase takes you to 52%. Same thing with dates that are out to make out. Make the date fun. Be playful. Tease her a little bit on the date. Have fun with that. That's a 20, that's a 30% increase again. Each of those, not significant, you barely get a notice. But if you've got your calculators and you do the maths, that's a more than double your results. Because guys, they add up. Every tiny little change adds up dramatically. And if you ever want to run a business and you haven't seen this before, you should be writing this down. Because this is how business works. This is how massive businesses are grown by tiny little improvements, piggybacking off the, the odds, the statistic conversion rate of tiny little improvements. And they make massive, massive changes. This is, this is one of the big reasons why a lot of you have not witnessed a huge change, because you're not seeing the little changes. So you never hold on to the things that work and the things that don't. Let me ask you guys, what other results could you measure? What are results? I, I talked about just previously, I talked about the, the percentage of, of girls that you talk to, you get a phone number. Yes, sir. Hand up the back. Your health. Your health, yes. Uh, but I want to talk, it's a good one, but I want to talk just in the context of dating. Okay. What are the metrics in the context of dating might you want to measure? Hair flips per man. <laughs> Hair flips per man, yeah, absolutely. What else? Yes, sir. Number of sex partners, yeah, absolutely. If you are measuring numbers of sex partners, you're doing pretty well if you're starting to measure that big time. Think about, think smaller, guys. Think smaller. Yes, sir, at the back. Financial outlay. Financial outlay, yes. The expense, amount of money spent per date is probably, probably a metric you're all going to want to look at at some point. How often they text back? Yes, the frequency with which they text back, the duration of time they wait before they text back, the number of girls who reject you on approach. Yeah, you could, think about, um, you could think about the number of phone numbers who reply to the first text, number of girls who agree to a second date. And these are all numbers. These are all statistics. They're all measurements. And if you were to just make a note at the end of every week, it would take you five minutes, and you'd instantly know how are you, how am I doing with women. The next thing you need to know, the next thing you're going to do is you've got to test possible Solutions. You gotta know, you gotta know what's happening. What is working and what isn't. Who knows Brian Tracy? Number of people, yes. He said to achieve something that you've never achieved before, you must do something you've never done before. Back in Sydney, many years ago, I was a moderator on uh, Sydney's biggest dating forum. And so we had a huge number of guys coming through, going out regularly, trying to get better with women. And, you know, I've always loved statistics. It's always been my thing. I love numbers because numbers, numbers tell you a story. But I'll tell you some numbers that were really, really scary. A guy who wants to go out and get better with women, if he goes out to a bar, the average guy from that forum was 10% likely to try something new on any given day or night out. That means if he goes out once a week for 10 weeks, he's tried one new thing. The average guy. How quick do you think you're going to learn at the rate of one new thing per 10 weeks? Yes. Not very, not very. Um, I imagine a few people in the room here may have heard of Charles Darwin, yes? What is he famous for? Someone shout it out. Yeah, the theory of evolution. That's what he's most famous for. He's not quite as famous for, um, but still I find very interesting that he uh, was a member of the Gourmet Club, a uh, group of people who travel the world finding exotic animals and then eating them and documenting how they tasted. <laughs> Bet you didn't know that. He discovered animals you'd never seen before, endangered, rare, rare species, and eat them. He stacked, I think it was like 100 giant turtles into the HMS Beagle on the way home so he'd have something good to eat. Bet you didn't know that. Anyway. I just like random facts. Yeah, the theory of evolution is this idea, just to repeat back to you so we're on the same page, that in, 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 across a species you have lots of different variations. And some of those variations make, make that member of a species more likely to survive and reproduce, and other variations make them less likely. 
And the ones that, that, that are best equipped for success survive, and the ones that aren't die out. So the same thing needs to happen if you're going out and trying to get better with women. If you go out and you test one thing every 10 weeks, things aren't going to change. You're going to evolve at a ridiculously slow rate. If you think about cockroaches, cockroaches used to be easy to kill. We have to, we have to keep releasing better and better toxins and better and better poisons to kill a cockroach because their reproduction cycle, the cycle at which they evolve, is so rapid, is so tiny, that they evolve way faster than humans. Humans, we still die from everything that we used to die of 100 years ago. In fact, if our friend Andrew, if he were to go out, and he were to go out twice a week, and he would test three new strategies a week for one month, he's learned more in a month than the average guy at 10% learns in a year. And all it takes is a little forethought, a little thinking, what should I test, what strategy? Today, tomorrow, Sunday, you're going to hear a lot of information about dating and relationships. You're going to hear a barrage of ideas, of tips, of strategies. You can trial them and test them and see what works for you. In fact, you should. Because I guarantee you're going to hear some things that will conflict with each other, and you've got to work out what's right for you. Now, for this event here, I want to do a little, <laughs> little experiment. Who's heard of Tinder? Some, many... Tinder is a dating app online, and what you do with Tinder is you see pictures of women, and if you like them, you swipe right. If you don't like them, you swipe left. And if they also see you and swipe right, then you can talk to each other. Very, very successful dating app. Now, I, uh, until uh, two weeks ago, was not an expert on Tinder. I'm a dating coach, not an online pickup coach. But I thought to myself, what could I do? What could I show you guys as possible in a very tiny period of time if you just do some testing. So, I took my mobile phone and I created a profile, not using myself, using a guy who, with a few female friends, we get agreed was roughly average. And we created a profile on him. And I did a whole bunch of tests. One hour a day, five days. I'll tell you what I learned. And I'll show you the power of testing with just five hours, a little bit of work. If you have five photos in your profile instead of one, your odds of getting a swipe right improve by 11%. By the way, how do I do this? I create a profile for 100 times and then count how many, how many matches I get. That's how it was done. 11% increase by having five photos instead of one. Wearing sunglasses in your profile picture, this surprised me, it was, a, it was an interesting one. A 16% increase in swipe right rate. I got a number of theories about it, but I, I won't share them because they're just that. I haven't yet proven what that is, but it was a very obvious one. Um, next one, a description in your profile longer than 15 words. Gave you an 18% increase of a swipe right rate. Don't know, didn't test it for long enough. I, I, I'm sure there is, there must be, right? But I only spent five hours over five days on this, so no, I, fortunately I can't. I'm still not an expert. Having a high quality photo versus a low quality photo in your profile, 26%. Saying something playful in the first message you send a woman on Tinder, 63% increase in the rate at which she's going to reply back to you. So I learned this five hours over five days. And let me show you what this all adds up to. A poor profile, all right? A poor profile, I got 12 yeses per 100 swipes. I got six girls replied to the first message, hey, how are you? Which is what I've learned pretty much every single guy does. Very interestingly. Uh, yes, I've also set up female profiles to see what guys write. Pretty much everyone writes that. Um, 
But the testing improved profile, I got 29 yeses per 100 swipes. And more importantly, 20 girls replied to the first message out of 100 that was playful and teasing. So what have I done? I've tripled the number of girls you're talking to per 100 swipes for five hours of work. But just like the two friends setting off on the journey for the hot Caribbean ladies, Almost every single guy alive does not do the testing. What does he do? He goes, bam, creates a profile. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, reply back. That's what almost every guy does. We don't think to test and strategize. I invested a very small amount of time. If I was single and Tinder was my avenue, I'd be kicking ass. <laughs> but I'd probably spend another five hours and get even better results again. Obviously, yes, there is an upper limit. Somewhere along the line, don't know what it is. Haven't tested for it. But you can imagine what you could accomplish. The power of testing and measuring. And if you ever want to run a business, you'll never be successful if you don't do this. If you want to be better with women, exactly the same strategy here. Thirdly, thirdly, you've got to systemize. What is a system? A system is like a machine. And what is a machine? Well, a machine is something that leverages your work. A machine is something where you put in as small amount of, of effort as possible and get as huge a result as possible. So what are you doing when you're testing, when you're systemizing? Well, systemizing is basically the opposite testing and measuring. Because testing and measuring, you're trying out new things, you're strategizing, you're hoping for the best, you're putting in a lot of work, but when you systemize, you put all the things you found that work really well, that you have proven statistically work well, and you put them together, you clump them together into a system, and then you follow that system. You make it as simple as possible, but no simpler, and you follow that system, and without having to think, you get a result. You get a good result. You get a result that's reliable, that's consistent. Who would like consistent results with girls instead of up and down, random, all over the shop, frustrating as all heck, isn't it? Yes. So let me, let me give you an example of some of the things that I've systemized in my own life, my own world when it comes to dating relationships. Um, one is the first date. My first date that I'd take girls on was the first thing that I ever tried to systemize and use everything I'd learned from. And my idea with this date uh, I started off with this basic idea of, look, I want to date with multiple locations, and I want a date that kind of escalates. You know, it starts off somewhere public and friendly and escalates to somewhere more private and more private and more private. You know, and I'd like it to end with a makeout. So, so I, try to, I created this date, you know, where we'd start off at a cafe. Coaching. He's also the founder of the School of Attraction, an NLP practitioner. Let's all welcome Damien Dika. What's up, man? Cheers, buddy. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got, it. got it. All right. Clump them together into a system. And then you follow that system. You make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. And you know, in shadow and stuff. And it's kind of romantic because you hear the waves lapping and see the city lights and stuff. And then I try to make out with it. That was the game plan. So in the beginning, this date was a little lumpy. I'd go on, comes to me. They're interested about me and what I do. In this case, I'm the salesman. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a system. And it's probably 10 times better than anything you guys are doing right now. Because one thing I know is most guys have no strategy at all. So a strategy is better than no strategy. Cool. It's nice to meet you. Got to go back to my, my girlfriends now. That's, that's, a, that's a sort of a very quick, snappy rundown of a woman's difficulty in dating. It's, women suffer just as much, if not more, than men with dating relationships. You guys may be surprised with that, but wow, the, 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 the pain that, that the women go through is no more or less than what I deal with with guys all the time. 